Hello and welcome back to the second part of Lilium Capital Markets Day presentation review. In the first part, we reviewed the newly announced partnerships with Custom Cells, which will be supplying lithium ion batteries for Lilium aircraft, and Azul, the largest airline network in Brazil. Lilium and Azul have entered into a preliminary deal for the sale of 220 aircraft, a deal projected at around $1 billion. We've also taken a look at the projected pricing of the air taxi service and taken a glimpse into Lilium Jet's cabin. I'll make sure to link that video in the description. In this video, we will review Lilium's aircraft design, progress towards certification, their partners, suppliers and investors, manufacturing strategy, commercial plan, and finally, the financials. All right, so first let's take a look at their technology, specifically the propellers. Lilium elected to go with ducted propellers, very common in aviation, very uncommon among other eVTOLs. According to Lilium, their proprietary propulsion technology drives major advantages over open propeller eVTOL. It ensures slower noise and lower vibration. It is safer because blades are contained within an envelope this technology is scalable, so it can be applied to larger aircraft with more payload, and that scalability also provides for high revenue potential per jet. They explained that their ducted fans provide same thrust with 10 times smaller footprint relative to the open propellers, employed by such vehicles like Jabi, Volcopter, and Ehang. They claim that their ducted fans provide for better scalability, while eVTOLs with open propellers can be scaled, that would only come with larger wingspan or higher noise. Their seven-seater jet comes with 36 engines. Each engine is contained within a duct, which prevents any potential blade loss. It comes with 72 battery modules, shielded from cabin, and three dissimilar flight control computers supplied by Honeywell. And this will provide for redundancy, no single point of failure, and an overall high safety standard. Now, the downside of ducted fans is the higher power consumption in hover than open propeller configuration. However, given that hover is only approximately 30 seconds, energy use is only 5% more versus open propeller per mission. So they argued that the slightly higher power consumption is worth the extra safety and lower noise profile that the ducted fan configuration provides. Here they provide comparison of the noise profile between Lilium Jet, Evitols with an open propeller and helicopters. I'm not entirely sure that the, that comparison is accurate because according to Jabi, their Evitol generates around 65 decibels at 100 meters, not 60 decibels at 220 meters. So that is just five decibels above Lilium Jet at the same distance. But one thing is certain, Evitols are a lot quieter than helicopters. And that is a huge benefit of Evitols. They will be allowed to operate in uh, populated areas without major concerns of noise pollution. Lilium is seeking regulatory approval from both the European Aviation Safety Agency and the Federal Aviation Administration, that is the United States regulator. They expect to get certified and enter into service in 2024. They have already reached an agreement with both regulators on the type of certification to be pursued and are working with them closely toward type certification. They're definitely on the right path because now all the unknowns on the regulatory process have been removed. Now they just need to meet all the compliance, demonstration, and reporting requirements. All right, next up is manufacturing. Not surprisingly, for their manufacturing strategy, they have chosen the phased approach. Presently, until 2023, they will be working on prototyping and working towards type certification. 2023 to 2025, they will begin initial production. That entails an in-house factory for a capacity of around 400 units per year. This will require limited initial investment with focused level of automation. 
in 2026, once they can prove the scalability of their business, they can begin global production with third parties. The benefits of this model is that it would be a capital light manufacturing strategy because factories will be built by third parties with Lilium's support and blueprint. Presently at their prototype manufacturing facility in Munich, they've got around 150 production engineers and technicians. All right, well, now let's talk about their commercial plans. They suggest that they're positioned to win along three dimensions. First is their product performance. Their jet is a seven-seater jet, bigger than most other EVTOLs in currently in development. Based on that fact, their unit economics are expected to be better than their competitors. Second is their proprietary technology, their ducted fans. They claim that ducted fans generate lower noise and vibration relative to open fans, and they are safer because the fans are contained within a duct, and they offer high redundancy simply because they have more engines per jet. Their jet design provides for scalability, and they also have tier 1 aerospace suppliers. And finally, business transaction or commercial agreements that are currently in place. And we've discussed those in the previous video. I will link it in the description. They expect to absorb shares from traditional passenger transportation modes through speed and accessibility. And they also believe that they can absorb the middle mile cargo segment through high speed 360 degree delivery. According to their presentation, they say that 50% of customers willing to pay for same day delivery. That may be true, but I think the willingness to pay for same day delivery depends on the extra cost. So I think that 50% is, is a bit misleading. Now they're going to pursue two business models. First is a business to customer type. They will be selling tickets on Lilium's own passenger networks operated by certified air carriers. And the second is business to business type. They will be selling fleets of aircraft with arranged service and maintenance support to corporates and governments. So they're looking to do a little bit of both. For comparison, Jabi is concentrating on business to customer business model. Archer and Vertical Airspace, on the other hand, are pursuing the business to business model. Each of these business models offers different benefits. The business to customer model would generally provide for better margins, so better return on investment overall. However, business to business type of model offers faster return on investment. We have reviewed a few examples of their business plan for a select regions in previous video. All right, and finally, the financials, the fun stuff, right? But it is the most important part because we are here to make money, aren't we? All right, so in 2026, once they have certain level of scale, they expect a single jet to generate around $5 million annually. Here is the breakdown of their calculations. They assume 4.5 out of 6 passenger seats are filled and a $2.25 price per passenger per mile. So that gives us approximately $10 revenue per vehicle per mile. 25 flights per day per jet, approximately 60 miles average trip distance, and approximately 10 hours spent in flight each day. They also model 10% annual downtime for maintenance and training, which makes sense. With $1.75 fully loaded cost per passenger per mile, that gives us 50 cents margin or 25%. 25% margin results in a payback period of approximately two years. Now these costs and margin assume piloted jets. Once the jets are operated by autopilot, which admittedly will take a quite some time to get to that point, but nonetheless, once that happens, and I do believe that it will happen at some point, then the margin will rise. And with that, the profitability of their business model will rise as well. And the payback period, respectively, will decrease. What else do they tell us? Well, they tell us that the batteries will need to be replaced every four months. Because, of course, batteries deteriorate over time. 
The lifetime of a single jet is approximately eight years. As mentioned before, the business to business model provides for immediate payback and a revenue predictability. So that is $4 million in upfront payment, $1 million after market support per annum, jet payback period immediate, of course, and a lifetime profit per jet around $5 million. Here they provide their financial projections. As I always say, we need to take these numbers with a grain of salt. It is not unreasonable to believe that there will be some roadblocks along the way, either on the regulatory side or on the production side. I think it is safe to say that there will be setbacks. I have no doubt that EVTOLs will become a major part of how we transport people and commodities. The timeline and how fast that technology is adapted is very difficult to predict. While I do believe that Lilium will eventually be able to generate that type of revenue, it may take it a bit longer to reach that milestone. So yeah, due to its relationship with uh, Tencent, it is possible that Lilium will also be operating in China. That would be a huge market, obviously. All right, to sum it up, I really like Lilium. I like its potential. But I do recognize that it is very early to invest in EVTOLs, simply because they are years away from revenue. But I will be closely monitoring the developments in this space. And when time is right, I will definitely be investing heavily into EVTOLs. Thus far, my two favorite EVTOLs are Lilium and Joby. But who knows? This may change because there are so many new players in this space. And it is very difficult to pick the winners at this point in time. All right, I hope this video was helpful and enjoyable. And if it was, please consider sharing it. And as always, feel free to like, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.